What's up, guys? Welcome back to Weekly Weird News. Woo, woo, woo. Look, we already got our uh, pig fucker shirts. Yeah, thanks. That was a one week turnaround. Yeah, thanks, uh, Twitter user at Dr. Hodson. You uh, really just. That was a, a rush order. We love it. David Cameron. Pig, pig fucker. fucker. Great. And he's holding a pig. Just great stuff. Yeah. But we got news. Yeah, so in just the last decade, the rise of smartphones and their increasingly sophisticated cameras has turned everyone with a device in their pocket into a photographer. And this is mostly a good thing. The yeah. ability to take a photo or video whenever you want and then post it to the web instantly has changed the world for better in a lot of ways. So documenting important, fascinating, and even infuriating things for all the world to see used to be reserved for professional photographers or those lucky enough to be carrying a camera around with them at an opportune time. But now for pretty much everyone, it's just a few quick taps away. Of course, with every great technological advance, the vast majority of the population ends up using it for vapid, useless bullshit. Mm -hmm. We're talking, of course, about the selfie. Ka cheek The act of using your camera's vastly inferior front-facing <laughs> camera to take pictures of yourself doing whatever. Yeah. Probably something that no one gives a shit about. Most likely. And now with the rise of selfie sticks that try and fail to give you the impression you're not just taking a photo of yourself alone, selfies are as annoying and ubiquitous as ever. But hey, it's, it's all harmless fun, right guys? Wrong! Because according to a recent article on Mashable, selfies have killed more people this year than sharks, the most evil and bloodthirsty animals on earth. You're giving them a bad rap, they're nice animals. I don't know. In 2015, eight people have been killed by sharks, and 12 people have died while taking selfies, killed by their own vanity. How ironic. Mm -hmm. How does one end up dead while taking a selfie, you ask? Well, in four out of those 12 cases, people fell to their deaths. I don't know why I'm laughing, including the most recent selfie death in mid-September when a Japanese man tried taking a selfie at the Taj Mahal and ended up falling down a flight of stairs. Bonsai. Yeah, some other causes of death include being hit by trains, accidentally shooting yourself in the head, and being gored to death during the running of the bulls. Now, uh, those 12 selfie deaths are just ones that Western media has been able to track. There could be, and probably have been, many, many more, especially in Russia, where the problem has gotten so bad that the government has issued an official set of guidelines for safe selfie taking. So according to the Russian government, there's been over 100 selfie-related injuries and, quote, dozens of selfie-related deaths so far this year. So many that they've created this handy graphic showing all the ways not to take selfies. Do not take a selfie 2,000 feet up in the air on a construction crane. Because those, they, those Russians, daredevils. they just love it. This first image here offers the safest advice of all. Just never take selfies. Or at least never take selfies while standing. Then, of course, don't take selfies while standing on train tracks with an oncoming train approaching just meters away. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, nice. Don't take selfies while standing on the edge of a small, rickety boat in choppy surf. Preferably not next to sharks. <laughs> don't take selfies while trying to pet mountain lions. Preferably not next to sharks. Don't take selfies while you're holding a gun. Okay, whatever. Don't take selfies while hanging off the edge of a roof holding onto a roof antenna. Don't take selfies while literally committing suicide jumping in front of a moving subway car. And of course, don't take selfies while falling down a mountain during an avalanche. Although you're kind of already fucked in that situation. Might as well, Might as well, as well document, document it. Yeah. yeah. So these all seem like very bizarrely specific things to warn the general yeah. public about. So we're just gonna have to assume that all of these things have actually already happened in Russia at some point and resulted in someone dying. Yeah. And they'll continue to, they're like patches on a uh, Boy Scouts uniform. Yeah. I'm just gonna keep tying them on when someone dies of something stupid. But between uh, all the insane car accidents and parkour shit that we see coming out of Russia on sites like Lively, I guess this isn't surprising at all. Nope. So in conclusion, selfies are more dangerous than sharks, but Russian selfies are more dangerous than anything ever. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, another big news this week, the Pope, Big Papa, visited yeah. America or at least a few places on the east coast of America, mm -hmm. and not California. Uh, we're supposed to call it the U.S. because people in Central and South America get really upset when we generalize. It's the U.S., Elliot. Continue. Anyway. U.S. cable news channels could literally uh, talk about nothing else for the entire week. Yes, the Pope certainly has a way of generating mass hysteria and adoration, despite the fact that even the most, quote, progressive and, quote, thought-provoking things he said on this trip basically amounted to common fucking sense. Okay, okay. If it sounds like we're being a little hard on Papa Francis, it's because we were pretty much on board with this guy. Up until he decided to have a last minute little chat with Kim Davis, who is a hypocritical cunt that any Christian with half a brain should be deeply ashamed of. Boo. But anyways, for a lot of Americans out there, the mere presence of Pope Francis in their own country was enough to drive them to do some odd things. Like this custom Pope Francis pizza that a pizzeria in New York City decided to make in honor of his visit. As the pizza chef told ABC7 New York, we're pizza men, we're not artists. Yeah. Hey now, don't sell yourself short, Tony. 
And no, I'm not being racist. The pizza chef's name actually is Tony. Yeah. So there you go. Anyway, apparently these edible works of art were in very high demand with customers lining up for a chance to cut the Pope into little slices and eat his little anchovy face. So cute. What an honor. With his jowls. <laughs> <laughs> then there's US Congressman Bob Brady, who unlike his fellow representatives, didn't rush Pope Francis after his historic speech in front of Congress in hopes of getting a hug or a handshake or a blessing. No, Congressman Brady instead rushed for a glass of water that the Pope had been drinking out of, and then he stole it. <laughs> he then brought it back to his office, where he and members of his staff and his family took turns taking sips out of it. It's what if he had a cold? Weird. <laughs> it's holy water, I guess. I, don't I, want, I just want to lick the glass that this 80-year-old Argentinian man just drank out of. I don't know, remember uh, Marin kept a... Uh, Oh, he kept Obama's, Obama's yeah, coffee he cup. He keeps it under a glass thing. That's pretty <laughs> That's cool, though, because cool. it says, like, Air Force One on it. <laughs> uh, then there's Chris Canella, a former New York City firefighter who managed to use his expired badge to con his way onto the tarmac at New York's JFK airport as the Pope was about to fly to Philadelphia. Ooh, yeah, he was eventually caught at a second checkpoint where detectives found a loaded gun and a bunch of marijuana in his Whoa. car. Uh, his reasoning for all this? Not violent. Nope. He just wanted to give the Pope his business card. He's a real go-getter. He managed to get through Pope security. Uh, uh, bravo, New York, New York uh, JFK security for actually catching this guy before he got too far, I guess. So whatever. Yeah, that's a, that's a badge. It's yeah. made out of metal. Let him through. Shabot, br bring him on in. Uh, but the best bit of weird Pope news came from the master trolls over at Madame Tussauds Wax Museum, who built a very lifelike wax figure of Pope Francis waving and paraded around New York in a convertible, causing what we can only assume was more mass hysteria. <laughs> I really? love this so much. Yeah. They should do this more often. Because he doesn't move all that yeah, much anyway. Just... Yeah. He's in that Fiat, just... Yeah. And, and the Jeep. He had the Jeep, too. Pope Mobile. Anyway, on to our favorite part of the show, because it requires the least amount of work. Yeah. This week's weirdest real headlines from real news sources. Cops nab minivan stuffed with 100 pounds of weed. And if you're wondering what 100 pounds of weed looks like, it's basically like stuffing four Christmas trees in the back of a van. <laughs> yeah, it looks hilarious. It looks fucking ridiculous. They should have made the van out of marijuana, like in Cheech and Chong's Up in Smoke. Yeah. And then that would have been fine, and it, and it would have burned all the, and any cops chasing them would have been high. Yeah, they could smoke the van. Yeah. Funny thing is, you would, that much weed, you would, you would smell, smell that yeah. from across <laughs> yeah. the fucking highway. Well, they didn't get caught, so yeah. yeah, not the smartest. Chicago TV station wishes Jews a happy Yom Kippur with Nazi emblem. Wow. Yeah, so just a cursory Google search? Yeah, it looks like this Google image, Star of David, and then they took the yellow Star of David with Yud in the middle oh. of the, with the, the, the blue and white stripes behind it. <laughs> it's terrible. Uh, I think we've basically just confirmed that no Jewish people work at that <laughs> no, TV station. A, you, that's the only possible explanation. Or at least one guy was like, ah, you know what, never mind. I'm gonna, no, let, I'm gonna let this play out. <laughs> I'm gonna watch the station Jeez. burn. Matthew McConaughey's brother gets year supply of beer for naming son Miller Light. I mean, he can always change his name. Uh, hmm. But it's only know. a year supply. Which, and it's in the most formidable year of this child's life that his brother's gonna be just tanked on piss beer. It's not for the child. For no, 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 I'm, I'm, oh. but I'm saying the father is oh. gonna get drunk. He only has a year to drink a well, lot supply. He's a smart guy. He's Rooster McConaughey. He's got the, yeah. the, West, the West Texas Investors Club. There you go. Made all of his money off of investing in fucking oil fields. I don't know. Yeah, sure. The daughter's name is Margarita. Yeah, the daughter's name what is What is going on? The guy likes to drink. He likes to drink and make investments. Let him the, the only problem is that the uh, Miller Lite year's supply is only like 500 something beers, which is like, that's like a beer and a half a day. That's not a nothing. Day. Yeah. It takes at least five Miller Lights a day to get drunk. Goat refuses to leave Saskatchewan Tim Hortons, gets arrested by Royal Canadian Mounted Police. <laughs> this is the most Canadian fucking headline I've ever read in my life. Yeah, and it tells the entire story. Yeah, there's, no really, like, there's no reason to elaborate. Uh, yeah. But yeah, you got the goat, you've got Tim Hortons? Did they ask one? it to leave and it just wouldn't? They were like, they were hey, too take polite. off, hoser! <laughs> Get out of here! Get out! Hey. <laughs> and then the goat wouldn't leave. Instead of shoving it out, yeah, they're very, I mean, they're very polite. Yeah. The ultimate bad hair day. Woman ends up in hospital after confusing builder's phone with hair mousse. <laughs> Another one of the most amazing photos <laughs> ever taken. Just sitting in the waiting room, just. just <laughs> yeah, she looks ridiculous. And there's all these memes like, oh, the weekday, or, because uh, she kind of looked like the weekend. Yeah. But yeah, that's stupid. Yeah. Doctor punches patient in stomach after his third visit to ER in one night. Apparently this guy is a 
habitual uh, uh, hospital visitor. He went yeah. like 15 times this year. This is Japan, and, by and, the way. Yeah, and, and in three, in one night he came three times. One was like, oh, I got elbow pain. Oh, my elbow. And then it, the, the other time was like, I got a headache. And the other time he's like, I got, I got a stomach pain. And he, the doctor just socked him. <laughs> <laughs> cover wasting. He was wasting everyone's Yeah, stomach. it's a public good there, I think. So like, yeah, he's wasting everyone's tax and dollars money, just being a big drama someone's queen. Someone's dying over here. He can't here, I'll help. give you something to complain about. And even the punch from the, uh, the the doctor wasn't enough to warrant a hospital visit. And apparently the guy apologized for his actions once he sobered up. Good. Okay. Yeah, you're right. I'm Good. in the wrong. I, I side with the doctor. Yeah. More doctors no need doctor. patients in the stomach. Yeah. It's the cure-all for what ails you. Go! God! <laughs> Suck to the gut. Man sets gas station on fire trying to kill a spider. This one was all over the place. <laughs> of course, you have the internet's uh, favorite thing, killing spiders with fire. So he opened up his gas can, or his, his gas cap. There's a spider inside. He's like, hmm, I'm gonna use my lighter to burn this spider. Regardless of the fact that this is where gasoline goes into my car and emits fumes from. Yeah. So that played out exactly how any person with a single brain cell would have thought. Yeah. Explode it. Yeah. But the spider's dead. <laughs> Good. Got him. Yeah. It would have been great if the spider just walked away from a burning <laughs> gas station. <laughs> Crazy scenes in Brazil as referee pulls out a gun on the pitch. What? They take soccer real serious down there. Yeah, I remember when they got, we were all sad because the World Cup and they lost? That didn't happen then, so why is it happening now? This isn't even World Cup, this is like a I pretty know. minor soccer match, but the ref, apparently he, this is just his uh, his fun job. Yeah. His real job is being a cop in oh. Brazil. Brazilian cops are known for their, you know, not having a short temper, being uh, just reasonable, yeah, great. not killing a bunch of people, so. You sure. Know, he got in an argument with one of the teams. I got your red card right here. Yeah, went back to the locker room. He's like, all right, how about now? Who's the referee now? I guess he can't argue with results. Passenger who tried to open plane door at 30,000 feet, quote, thought it was a toilet. They don't, no, you open, didn't. Like, they don't open like toilets. No, you didn't. It you doesn't even, not. it's like a giant latch. The, the fucking, the sky is outside. Yeah. There's a window. Yep. You little liar. I, I will say, fucking people treat that door with no respect. Oh, they'll just Those sit over, on it. Yeah, overnight flight, or the, uh, yeah, overseas flights. People just, it explicitly says, do not sit on this. People just sitting on it, waiting in line yeah. for the bathroom, just, and, and, buddy, and, yeah, you? I, I, meanwhile, I'm just sweating. Just like, oh God, <laughs> they can blow off at well, any it's, second. It's impossible for it to open midair. I, do, I don't care about it's how the realistic pressure it is. makes it impossible. So then why is there a door there at all? But uh, when it crashes, you crash you land. So what happens if the plane's on fire and you have and you have a parachute and you want to get out that door? There's no parachutes on commercial. I brought my own. <laughs> I brought my own. It's not, like the brings, it's not only the brings. It's not Everybody, check under your seat. There's a parachute down there. We're all gonna parachute out of this burning airplane in midair. As far as I know, bringing a parachute, suspicious, yes. Illegal, no. Mustard, not just for hot dogs anymore. Research shows. What could it be for? I, it's a really dumb headline, but apparently uh, mustard has some chemical in it that's like the best food preservative they've ever found. Oh, good. You just I was just gonna say on. pretzels. Yeah, it's like, pretzels. Pretzels. there are other foods that you <laughs> yeah. eat mustard on. It's yeah. not like this. I want to talk to the scientists and be like, bro, <laughs> <laughs> there, there is a lot of things you can do with mustard that you yeah. have been missing out on this whole time. Primarily pretzels. Yeah. So the number one dip for pretzels and sandwiches. Yeah. Uh, sauerkraut. Yeah. There you go. You can do a lot with it. Tonga's cheeky Rugby World Cup stars visited Chicken Joint Nando's 10 days in a row before beating Namibia at Sandy Park. Can't argue with results. Nope. It's the literally it's the, Perry Perry sauce. it's the breakfast, lunch, and dinner of champions. Yeah. And uh, apparently some of the players loved it so much that they came back for all three meals a day. Good. Like made friends with all the local punters yeah. that hang out at the Nando's. I'm sure there was lots of top quality banter going oh, around yeah. that table. And then they won. Yeah. Namibia didn't eat at Nando's. No. And look what happened. They had Maccas. <laughs> yeah. And the final headline, Meerkat Keeper guilty of assaulting Monkey Keeper over love triangle with Llama Keeper. People fucking in a zoo? Yeah, it's a London Zoo. I, you know, this doesn't surprise me at all. Zoos have gotta be just like fuck fest. Yeah. You're, you're watching animals have sex all day. That's what gets you And like, <laughs> no, but like. Oh God, look at this. The elephants are at it again. Yeah, you just see dicks <laughs> swinging all the time and like just, <laughs> Fucking, you're wearing like those shorts that those zookeepers wear, <laughs> just balls hanging out. Like <laughs> Their balls aren't hanging out all the time. That's not what happens. Anyway, so yeah, the llama keeper had was a man. He dated the meerkat keeper, or he dated the monkey keeper, and then dated the meerkat keeper after he broke up with the monkey keeper. 
He dated the meerkat keeper first. This is the most convoluted anyway, they had a headline for a workplace love triangle. They I've had the, the London Zoo know. Christmas party for all the zookeepers. Oh, that's what happened. And then one of them got glass. You gotta watch they out. They got for glass. Christmas. You gotta watch out for Christmas parties. Yeah. That's where it happens. Everyone yeah. ruins their entire career at Christmas parties. Yeah. Especially yeah. at a zoo. Oh, yeah. They're lucky they didn't let out any of them dangerous animals. Ah, let's let the elephants go. Yeah. Ah. I wouldn't have a party to fuck. That's, that's, that's a terrible idea. Yeah, someone will Jumanji waiting to happen. Exactly. All right, guys, that's Weekly Weird News. Remember to keep fucking pigs. See you next time. Watch our episode about Planned Parenthood and uh, defend our honor in the comments and defend the, uh, you know, w that people's rights to get em emergency contraceptives and yeah. STD treatment and stuff like that. And we also uh, did a Tech Tuesday talking about all that cool Google stuff and a podcast. Check that out, too. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Keep oh, on fucking that pig.